In this video, we are going to look at the time complexity of insertion sort. Before that, you need to understand how insertion sort works. See here, I am just going to give you an overview of the logic, not in detail. If you want more detailed explanation, please check out my previous video and I am going to provide you the link in the description box. Now, let's take this array. Initially, this array will be divided into two parts. One is a sorted array and the another one is and sorted array. By default, this first element that is a of 0 will be considered as sorted array and the rest of the elements will be considered as unsorted array. And then it will take the elements one by one from this unsorted array and compare it with the elements of sorted array until a correct position is found for that particular element. Now this is a program for insertion sort. Here this outer loop is for this unsorted array and this inner loop is for this sorted array. So this outer loop will take the elements one by one from this unsorted array and then this inner loop will find out the correct position for those elements in this sorted array. And then the control will come out of this inner loop and it will place that element in that correct position. So this is the basic logic which is involved in this insertion sort. Now let's see how to find out the best case for this insertion sort. So the best case will occur when the given array is already sorted because if the input array is already sorted then the algorithm will perform only the minimum number of operations. So this sorted array will be considered as an input in this best case scenario. Now, with this input array, we have to find out the number of comparisons performed by this algorithm. So this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part. Now this 2 is compared with 1. Here 2 is already in its correct position. So no need for any swapping. And for this element, we did only one comparison. Now this is our sorted part. And this is our unsorted part. Again, this 4 is compared with 2. Here, 4 is already in its correct position. So, no need for any swapping. And for this element, we did only one comparison. Now, this is our sorted part. And this is our unsorted part. Again, this 5 is compared with 4. Here, 5 is already in its correct position. So no need for any swapping or any movements and the number of comparison is 1. Now this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part. Here 6 is compared with 5. Here 6 is in its correct position. So no need for any swapping and the number of comparison is 1. Now this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part. Now 10 is compared with 6. Here 10 is in its correct position. So no need for any swapping or any movements. And the number of comparison is 1. And that's it. Now we have to calculate the total number of comparisons. Which is 5. Now in big O notation, we have to express the number of operations in terms of n. Which means... In terms of input, we have to represent this 5. Here, n is 6. So, we can rewrite this 5 as n minus 1. And also, in big O notation, we have to ignore this constant term. So, best case is order of n. Now, let's see how to find out the worst case. So, the worst case will occur when the array elements are in descending order. Because, if the elements are entirely in reverse order, then the algorithm will perform maximum number of operations. So, this reversely sorted array will be considered as an input in this worst case scenario. Now, with this reversely sorted array, we have to find out what is the total number of comparisons performed by this algorithm. Now, this is our sorted array and this is our unsorted array. So first 6 is compared with 10. Here the elements are not in the correct order because we are trying to arrange the elements in 
ascending order so 6 has to be there before this 10 so for this element 6 we need one comparison now this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part now this is not the correct position for 5 it has to be there before 6 so in order to reach this position 5 is compared with 10 and again 5 is compared with 6 so for this element we need two comparisons now this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part here this is not the correct position for this 4 it has to be there before 5 in order to reach this position 4 is compared with all the three elements so we need three comparisons for 4 now this is our sorted part and this is our unsorted part now this is not the correct position for this element 2 it has to be there before 4 so this 2 is compared with all the four elements so we need four comparisons for 2 in the same way 1 has to be there before this 2 so 1 is compared with all these five elements so we need five comparisons for 1 now this is the total number of comparisons and we have to express this in terms of n here n is 6 so we can rewrite this 5 as n minus 1 see here the sequence is sum of first n minus 1 numbers so n into n minus 1 divided by 2 and in big O notation we have to ignore this constant term so it will be n into n minus 1 and when you solve this you will get n squared minus n from this you have to consider only the higher order term because it's a big one notation so the worst case is order of n square so this is the best worst and average time complexities of insertion sort best case time complexity is order of n and worst and average time complexity is order of n square and that's it if you have any doubt please comment it below and i will see you in the next video until take care and bye bye